booby-trapped cars exploded driven by suicide bombers in Saad al Jabri Square in Aleppo, killing and wounding dozens of citizens. The first and second cars were detonated near a Siyahi club, killing 34 people and injuring 122 others, causing huge material damage. The two blasts occurred simultaneously with mortar guns shelling by terrorists in the center of the square and in Al-Hal market. The Syrian army also killed three armed men with explosive belts, wearing Syrian army military uniforms, who entered the place from the northern side of the hotel. The third car was driven by a suicide bomber as well. It exploded in Tajmil Mashraqa neighborhood after it had been the target of fire shooting by the guards who were in the place. The Russian Foreign Ministry strongly condemned in a statement the terrorist bombings in Aleppo and reiterated its denunciation of all forms of terrorism under any circumstances, including internal armed conflicts. The statement also called for punishing the perpetrators of these crimes that target innocent people. The ministry asserted that supporting the perpetrators of such crimes is immoral and unacceptable and renewed its stand that calls for immediate stop of violence in Syria and reaching a peaceful solution for the current crisis on the basis of international law and the communique of the Geneva Contact Group. In Aleppo, terrorist Haj Abdul Rahman, the mufti of the armed terrorist groups, was killed in Al-Kalasi neighborhood in Bustan al-Qasr. An army unit also killed leaders of the two terrorist groups near Jamal Mosque in Al-Kalasi. Meanwhile, the Syrian army also destroyed three cars equipped with Doshka machine guns in Hayyan neighborhood. Another army unit targeted a terrorist gathering near Sukkar Mosque and Al-Yarmouk at Al-Karami schools in Al-Kalasi in Aleppo, killing and injuring scores of terrorists. Meanwhile, an army unit targeted a group of gunmen near Al Zarzur Hospital in Al Sukari region, inflicting heavy losses on them. The border guards in Ghazali village in Idlib suburbs foiled an infiltration attempt by a terrorist group that tried to steal into Syria from Turkish territories, killing and wounding its members. Several motorcycles used by the terrorists were destroyed. Some of the armed men fled back into Turkish territories. An engineering unit detonated an explosive device in the same site, weighing between 50 to 75 kilograms, planted by an armed terrorist group. Authorities set up an ambush for an armed terrorist group inside a car which was terrorizing citizens and committing acts of sabotage in Qala'at al-Madiq area in Hama countryside. The Syrian army destroyed the car, killing all the terrorists inside it. In Hama countryside, a unit from the Syrian Arab Army targeted an armed terrorist group in Akash village affiliated to Al Salamiya city and destroyed three Doshka equipped cars, killing all terrorists inside them. The army units also cleared Aqirabat area of the terrorist groups. In Al Soha village, another army unit cleared the health center and destroyed a pickup car used by the terrorists, in addition to seizing large quantity of stolen medical items, military uniforms, communication devices, ammunition, and weapons. An army unit confiscated a huge amount of weapons which included a sniping rifle, RPG launchers and automatic guns during an operation against a terrorist hideout in Bala town in Damascus countryside. A military source said two four-wheel drive cars were destroyed and all the terrorists inside the hideout were killed. The People's Assembly condemned the terrorist explosions in Aleppo which left several people killed and injured dozens of citizens. Minister of Agriculture Subhi Al Abdullah talked about the farm work and the losses sustained by the agricultural sector as a result of the armed group's terrorist acts. Minister of Oil and Mineral Wealth Saeed Hunaydi surveyed the oil situation in Syria and the damages resulting from the acts of sabotage that targeted the sector of oil and the impact of Western sanctions on Syrian citizens. On his part, Minister of Electricity Imad Khamis reviewed the mechanism of the ministry's work in the upcoming phase. Prime Minister Wa'al al-Halaqi chaired the Higher Economic and Social Planning Council during which he reviewed the basis and direction of preparing the state budget for year 2013 and fiscal revenue, current allocations and investment. The Prime Minister pointed out to the economic situation and the impact of the blockade and sanctions on the economic and service sectors and its impact on the resources of the public treasury compared to previous years. The Prime Minister stressed the need to take measures to rationalize and control spending, both current and investments, and to focus on securing the basic needs of citizens and providing the nutritional requirements and pharmaceuticals. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our news for today. Three booby-trapped cars exploded this morning, driven by suicide bombers in Saddam al-Jabiri Square in Aleppo, killing and wounding dozens of citizens. 
The first and second cars were detonated near a Nadi Sahi club, killing 33 people and injuring scores of others, leaving huge material damage in the sites of the explosion. The two blasts occurred simultaneously with mortar guns shelling by terrorists in the center of the square and in Al Hal market. The armed men with explosive belts wearing Syrian army military uniforms then entered the place from the northern side of the hotel. The army handled the situation and eliminated them. The third car was driven by a suicide bomber as well. It exploded in Tajmil, Masharika neighborhood, after it had been the target of fire shooting by the guards who were in the place. No casualties were reported. Also in Aleppo, terrorists Haji Abdurrahman, the Mufti of the armed terrorist groups, was killed in Al Kalasa neighborhood in Bistan al Qasr in an army operation. An army unit also killed Abu Duraid and Abu Nazih leaders of two terrorist groups in Jamal Mosque in Al Kalasa. Meanwhile, our armed forces also destroyed three cars equipped with Doshka machine guns in Hayyan neighborhood. Another army unit targeted a terrorist gathering near. Sukkar Mosque and Al Yarmouk and Al Karama schools in Al Kalasa in Aleppo, killing and injuring scores of terrorists. Meanwhile, an army unit targeted a group of gunmen near a Zarzur hospital in the Sukkari region, inflicting heavy losses on them. Competent authorities today set up an ambush for an armed terrorist group inside a car which was terrorizing citizens and committing acts of sabotage in Qalat al madiq area in Hama countryside. Sana correspondent quoted a source in the governorate as saying that the competent authorities destroyed the car, killing all the terrorists inside it. In Daraa, competent authorities confiscated large amounts of weapons and killed a large number of terrorists in an Azihin camp in the city. An army unit confiscated today big amounts of weapons which included a sniping rifle, RPG launchers and automatic weapons during an operation against a terrorist hideout in Bala town in Damascus countryside. A military source told Sana correspondent that two four-wheel drive cars were destroyed and all the terrorists inside the hideout were killed. The border guards in Ghazala, a village in Idlib suburbs, foiled an infiltration attempt by a terrorist group from Turkish territories into Syria, killing and wounding its members. Several motorcycles used by the terrorists were also destroyed. Some of the armed men fled back into Turkish territories. The same source said an engineering unit detonated an explosive device on the same site. Each weighed between 50 to 75 kilograms planted by an armed terrorist group. The People's Assembly, Assembly speak, condemned the terrorist explosions in Aleppo today, which left several martyrs and injured dozens of citizens. Assembly Speaker Muhammad Jihad al Ham branded the blast as an ugly crime that targeted innocent civilians and implementation of the plot of terrorists who had no fear of God, who alleged to be Muslims but were actually far from any Islamic value. He reiterated condemnation of such crimes and of the states that stand behind the terrorists. The assembly was later briefed on the government's assessment of the internal situation in Syria. Minister of Agriculture Subh al-Abdullah talked in detail about the farm work and the losses sustained by the agricultural sector as a result of the armed groups terrorist acts which targeted the establishments affiliated to the Ministry of Agriculture. Minister of Oil and Mineral Wealth Sayyid Moza Hunaydi surveyed the oil situation in Syria and the damages resulting from the acts of sabotage that befell the sector of oil and the impact of Western sanctions on Syrian citizens. 
On his part, Minister of Electricity, Ahmed Khamis, reviewed the mechanism of the Ministry's work and the upcoming phase. Several People's Assembly members presented interventions on various economic, political, and social issues. <coughs> Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has underlined the need for implementing what was agreed upon in Geneva last June concerning the crisis in Syria. In a press interview, Lavrov said future development of the situation in Syria will be determined by the order of priorities embraced by concerned parties. He pointed out that the situation in Syria can develop into two scenarios only, adding that it is simple yet dangerous to choose any one of them. Lavrov affirmed that if priority number one is to save the lives of the Syrians, then what was agreed upon in Geneva must be implemented. That is to compel all parties to stop the violence and sit at the negotiating table. However, if priority number one is to be to determine the regime in Syria, we are not capable of doing anything to help, and the UN Security Council does not resort to such practices which run counter to its jurisdiction. The U.S. State Department affirmed that the U.S. has no plans for a military intervention in Syria. The spokeswoman for the U.S. State Department, Victoria Noland, said in reply to a question about Russia's warning against any Western intervention in Syria, especially creating no-fly zones or isolated safe corridors, that the U.S. has made it clear that it is just offering what she called non-lethal support to the Syrian opposition. In Libya, as the security situation is deteriorating, acts of violence rose up. The news sources said that one person was killed and five others wounded during the clashes which broke out between armed militants from Misrata and other groups from Benuali. Intense fighting centered in east of Wadi Mardoun, northeast of the country. Finally, Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez pledged to redouble his efforts to establish a system that serves the interests of all citizens of Venezuela in case he won the upcoming presidential elections. Chavez told his supporters in his native town, Sabinetta, that his presidential term in the next six years will witness bigger changes. The Venezuelan president affirmed that his country has laid the socialist foundation for the 21st century and will launch even more profound changes in the future. <coughs> With this, we end on this Britain for today. For more information about Syria and the region, you can visit our website in English, syrianline.sy. Up next, the latest business of market news with Khaled after the break. <laughs>